Do you also drink out of a water bottle at home? Am I the only one? Hello everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Mario So, and today I want to talk about a few things that I didn't expect about the Sony a7 IV after shooting my first paid product video with it. But before we get into that, let me show you the final result. So welcome back again. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for future videos similar to today's video. If you already subscribed and you came back, thank you again so much for being here. So the video that you just saw was completely shot on the Sony a7 IV. And after shooting with this camera for a little bit over a month now, there are a few things that I wanted to talk about today. After the Sony a7 IV came out, there was quite a little bit of controversy about this camera. So some people really liked this camera while others didn't really like it and it was not for them. Other people complain about overheating issues or for example, not having 120 frames per second in 4K or having a crop in 4K 60 and a lot of other things. But before we continue ahead, if you have a Sony a7 IV and your camera is experiencing overheating after just 20 minutes of playing with the menus, there is a quick fix for that. Well, fix for the time being. You can check it out here. And I also have a bunch of other videos on the Sony a7 IV that you can check out on my channel and I'll leave links in the description below. If you haven't heard about some of the new features on this camera, there are quite a lot and a bunch of them I've actually put to use in the recent month. There is a focus assist function, there's a focus map, there's breathing compensation, it has 4 2 2 10 bit color for video and it has an increased megapixel count at 33 megapixels. And the best thing of it all is that it comes at $1,000 cheaper than the Sony a7S III. So I've been shooting a bunch of product videos over the past month with the Sony a7 IV, and here are a few things that I've noticed and that I did not expect at all from this camera. So the first one is the crop that you get in 4K 60. This did not affect me at all, but it's mainly because I'm shooting a lot of product videos these days in studio, and I don't need a very wide look for my videos. So having that extra reach was beneficial to me. So when I was using, for example, a Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter at 60 frames per second in 4K, it punched in by one. 1.5 times. So that gave me an equivalent of, let me do the math first, 42 mil to 112 mil, which is a very useful focal length when it comes to product shooting. Because I'm in a small space, I usually like to shoot in a longer focal length so I can hone in on the subject and not show too much of my surroundings. So for me and the things that I'm shooting, it didn't quite affect me at all. And if you're someone who does a lot of vi event videography or wedding videography, I don't think this is going to affect you either. So having that extra reach is going to be beneficial for any sort of video event coverage. But if you're someone who likes to vlog and you need the super wide focal length look, then this is something that you might want to consider and it might not work for you. The second thing that I was actually impressed at was the quality of 120 frames per second in HD. So this camera does not shoot 120 frames per second in 4K, only in HD. But now you're able to get 422 10-bit color in HD when shooting at 120 frames per second. And coming from the a7 III, shooting on the, at 120 frames per second on the a7 III, this is a very huge upgrade when it comes to color. And as you can see, the footage looks quite crisp. And although this footage is overscaled from 1080p to 4K, it still looks very good in my opinion. The next thing is focus map. In the beginning, I thought this was just going to be a gimmick or a fancy thing that Sony introduced and I wouldn't use it that much. But I actually surprisingly ended up using this a lot especially when it comes to product shoots. I'm not sure about you, but I never really liked focus peaking because I was never 100% sure which parts were actually in focus. Some parts were would be a little bit less vibrant as others and my eyes just couldn't really tell exactly. For me, focus map is a lot more intuitive and a lot easier to nail down your focus, especially if you're shooting macro. And when you're shooting macro, everything just becomes super shallow depth of field for some reason. So having the ability to clearly nail down your focus is very important. And I've been using this focus map so much that it has now made it to a customized button on my Sony a7 IV. The next thing that I was surprised about is overheating or the lack of overheating. In the beginning, 
getting my the a7 IV overheated even only about after 20 minutes of using it or just playing around with the menus. But after setting the auto temperature setting to high, my a7 IV hasn't overheated at all. So I've been shooting all the videos with the screen flipped out and that could contribute to the camera being able to dissipate some of that heat and not overheat. For some of these product shoots that I've been doing, especially the one for this video, I was shooting on the a7 IV for about four hours, three to four hours straight and there was no overheating at all. The next thing is the full size HDMI. I did not expect this to be a big deal, but it's actually something very small, but it comes in very, very handy. I do not have too many of those micro HDMI to HDMI cables lying around at home, but I do have a lot of regular HDMI cables lying around. Depending on the rig that I'm setting up, sometimes I may need a longer cable or a shorter cable. And having a regular full-size HDMI is so useful for this reason. It just makes it so much easier to connect my camera to my external monitor in case I wanted to try cables of different lengths, depending on that setup. Another thing that I wasn't expecting is the battery life. Having shot extensively on the Sony a7 III, the battery lasts quite a long time on that camera. And although the battery is the same for these two cameras because the a7 IV takes a lot more processing power, it has a new sensor and it captures video at a higher bit rate or data rate, it just makes sense that battery is going to be drained a lot faster. I went through a battery and a half I think in about the three to four hour shoot which isn't too bad either but just coming from the a7 III is something that I did not expect. And the last thing that I did not expect about the Sony a7 IV was how useful that quick dial was for me. I love this dial, which makes it very easy and quick to switch between photo, video, and SNQ mode. And as I was shooting my videos, there were times where I liked what I was setting up and I wanted to take a high resolution still, I just quickly switched it to the photo mode. And then I had to go and set up for maybe a super slow motion shot in 120 frames per second. So I switched that to SNQ mode and then switch back to video mode if I wanted just a regular 24 frames per second in 4K. So that made the entire workflow a lot quicker. And even though this was not a run and gun scenario, having this quick dial is going to be useful for you if you're doing a lot of run and gun shooting. So that's it for today's video, guys. These are all the things that I experienced with the Sony a7 IV shooting my first product video with this camera. So let me know in the comments below what feature on this Sony a7 IV have you enjoyed the most so far. So hit the subscribe button if you haven't already the notification bell as well and i mean if you made it this far into this video you should probably subscribe so that's greatly appreciate it and i'll see you in the next one